Uh, our next talk is by Chandra. It's comparing and evaluating deep learning and traditional models for storm now casting. Can you see my screen? Yes, but it's not in, in presenter mode. How about now? Yes, now it is. Okay. That was an amazing talk by Libby Lawrence, and it's, it's going to be a very hard act to follow because she was standing up and she was animated and I'm sitting down, <laughs> but I'll give it a try. So I was asked to speak, not in an overview way, but uh, go through some of the pain and sufferings and decision trees that uh, scientists and students uh, go through and then pick up a very specific problem. And I'm glad I picked up now casting because um, um, Libby was talking about subseasonal scales and, and uh, so on, but we're going to be talking about now casting, which is in a few hours of time scale. So like everybody else, I want to dedicate this to all my students. It's, it's the students who make us all look good. So let me skip this. Um, so I want to go back and see a lot of us historically have been struggling trying to push uh, you know, machine learning and then artificial intelligence type thinking into this literature. Look at, uh, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse. Uh, I'm moving my mouse, can you see that? Some of the early papers see the date, it's 1997. And uh, many of you might have heard about uh, a person by the name Dave Atlas. And uh, he is considered as the father of uh, radar meteorology and then I gave this talk in a conference and then he was in the audience and he got up and said, Chandra is talking about black magic and voodoo here. And uh, that's how this uh, thing was introduced. But um, I just wanted to see the uh, talk a big class of problems for the enthusiastic radar meteorologists in this crowd that uh, identification, classification of different hydrometeors, uh, and meteorological echoes are becoming a big class of problems that have been solved. And I mean, not solved, but they've been pursued with the, uh, multiple polarization radars where I see great emphasis coming from machine learning. And then I also expanded that to data quality. And so when uh, Professor Amy McGovern talked about uh, hail, I was very pleased to hear that. And then quantitative precipitation estimation, AKA rainfall measurement. This is a 3000 year old problem. People have been measuring rainfall 3000 years ago and even now people are still measuring rainfall just because we have variability at all scales. And I'm gonna pick up this very specific problem of short term prediction of precipitation, which is now casting. I took this because this is very actionable and people talk about AI in uh, different applications. A few days ago, because of COVID-19, we do a lot of this online teaching and then we have been asked to pick up one method of uh, proctoring exams where apparently AI is used to catch people cheating. So that's <laughs> something very specific and actionable. So now casting is something that uh, the first responders take action and be running a test bed in Dallas Fort Worth where people today take action that based on our radar observations, it's a little scary. They close roads and then vacate people um, uh, based on all this. So I took that problem and then got into some very specifics here. And this is um, some classics of these are some eye candy pictures and uh, this is where I think a lot of us are struggling and I'm glad um, um, Libby Barnes, uh, I'm used to calling her Libby instead of Elizabeth Barnes and I hope it's okay. Um, 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 talked about visualization will be the, what did that she, what did she call the new revolution? And um, that's something a lot of the radar people are struggling because we make my measurements at multiple dimensions. We have reflectivity, differential reflectivity, KDP, Rho HV. There are so many things being measured. And finally, we pick up and say, this part is uh, grapple, and this is hail, and then this is rain, and this is heavy rain. And then 
and then sometimes people make jokes to me are you just making this up so this is the type of um, area and uh, depth that uh, a lot of these uh, machine learning things are uh, starting to compete with so then there is this big uh, uh, scale problem that is uh, we've been working with uh, uh, looking at observations from satellites and then there is rain gauge on the ground and then sometimes people blindly take one rain gauge that's hardly representative of the two meters around it and then uh, start training things with it and then we've gone through and looked at the uh, scale issues across these things so with all these things um let me see where is the time monitor i am not able to see that um is there a way to see that time monitor on this uh, okay um nine, you're at you're about nine and a half minutes left okay let me so let's go into now casting now casting we refer to a short term which is zero to six hours so we need something that's extremely fast obviously machine learned uh, applications when you apply it, it's extremely fast and then um, in the first few hours it's basically the now casting that rules the forecast these days and then models come after many hours let's say when they pick up and so on four or five hours and then in between it's blended we're doing a lot of work on blending these things but i'm going to focus on the first few hours and and radar and radar products are are extremely useful in uh, making these decisions. So where are we going to make impact on if machine learning has to be introduced? These are, there is things called area-based methods for now casting, and then object-based. Object-based means you recognize an object that is um, like, you call this as a supercell. And then there is a lot of this uh, traditional um, stochastic models that came from hydrology background people and they are well sophisticated in hydrology and then there are things called the steps these are all the general fields and uh, the area based technique is what is presently used for supporting aviation today so what is involved in solving now casting this basically solves the flow equation and um, and this type of equations have to be solved in real time and then make predictions into the future where the radar echo is going. And um, so then people started connecting this class of problems into now casting. And then uh, the problem statement is, whereas you go talk to computer vision people, they will say, what, you're looking at frames like this, and then you need to make uh, predictions into future frames. We do this all the time in highway, uh, cars going through and there are images and so on and so forth. And then, but the big difference is uh, the cars don't evolve with time and unless they explode or uh, do other things, unless this is James Bond car or something. And uh, there are a lot of other issues. There's growth, there's decay, and then you have very quick decision times on these things. So all this translated into how can we take the advantages of what is going on here and the traditional background of uh, uh, people, you know, people have solved very good complex equations. That's a lot of the smarts. How can we stand on the top of the shoulders of all uh, people and then get new ideas and then combine everything and make it work? So, so an atmospheric scientist, a radar scientist, start us scratching their head and then say, okay, this is data set, architecture, and then there is desired output. That is, in now casting problem, you know very well what the truth is because you just wait half an hour the storm will be there in half an hour and you know what happened so this is a fantastic problem to do training there is no problem with ground truthing this that everything is there for you so you mess up you make a forecast in 30 minutes you mess up people will tell you within 30 minutes you messed up you put the storm in the wrong basin or you put it in the wrong city so it's a very beautiful problem for teaching students so then what happens is they go into this architecture and then you go shopping there is all sorts of things here there's convolutional neural network and there's somebody else comes in. <laughs> you just go and then somewhere along the line this lsdm people started making inroads into really doing now casting because it's like a following a jello 
but the jello shape cannot even be maintained and then it's moving it's changing it's changing shape and then there is all sorts of things going on some sort of now casting if you're making now casting for uh, space shuttle launch they need to know if the reflectivity is going to be greater than 30 dBz. they're not interested in knowing if the storm is growing then they, they will scrub the launch so a lot of the times the decision is lack of a better term binarized and then the third thing is everybody is looking at images for them images is rgb it takes only zero to 256 value whereas radar people will spend their lifetime trying to make get data from zero dbz to 70 dbz and then you can pull that out in linear scales of millimeter to the six meter cube does it even matter if you are competing with a human forecaster a human forecaster is just looking at pictures and making decisions. So here's an example of, um, I just wanted to mix things up, an example of somebody puts a grid on these places and say, on all these locations where there is a grid, there is going to be echo greater than uh, 30 dBz in 30 minutes of time. And that's a binarized decision. So you have all these choices. You have relative decisions, that is, is the storm going to grow up are going to decay, binary, binary decisions. Is it going to cross 35 dBz? If it's going to cross 50 dBz today, weather service issues uh, hail. Oops, sorry. Weather service issues uh, hail forecast. And then there are absolute decisions that the rainfall people want to know. What is the actual reflectivity? And I want it in millimeter to the six to the meter cube. Give me a number. Don't give me rainfall is going to go up. So I'm going to skip some of these. And then there are metrics. There is metrics are all over the place. You optimize one metric and the now casting community has known how to take all this and then put it into a different index. But then you go into machine learning community that is structural similarity index. Then everybody loves and worships this log, cosine, hyperbolic functions and so on. But the game uh, coming and marrying this from two different directions actually gives to new ideas in terms of what metric is good for you and that's based on problems so what i wanted to do is uh, go and check that uh, how much um, uh, baseline information is there i took darts which is um, 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 uh, optical flow based uh, machine which is closest to computer vision it's operational in Dallas Fort Worth in Texas. People, roads are being closed and people are making decisions. And then go look at uh, AI based methods. And then I also want to look at different thresholds. For some people, if you don't cross 40 dBz, then that's the threshold of uh, uh, now casting problems. Okay, there is, there is something called uh, flexibility. Flexibility is an awesome tool. You can climb to safety or hang yourself. That, that's the thing with machine learning. Previously, when we were struggling with uh, writing complicated equations and solving flow equations to fast Fourier transforms, you can train everything. You just go, go shopping and get a faster computer and get a bigger GPU. Why can't I just uh, predict the... <laughs> I, as, I assimilate last five hours of storms in Dallas Fort Worth to predict next two minutes. So just people try everything and then you can predict into the future. So there is a lot of things involved. RESCOM is a residual neural network, convolutional, you, and then 16 frames, you go into 16 frames and so on. So what neural network machine learning technique to choose for now casting that's something that um, you know like um, elizabeth Barnes said you need to go and think what is the science and then is it going to create keep the area structure do we need labeling for this are we doing classification of convective stratiform storms or is it uh, we don't need labeling and then is this the recurrent neural net, like uh, recursive stuff? That is, you want to watch this growing and then decaying, or you want to see where the storm is going. Both are very important. Position of the storm as well as intensity. You get the intensity right. Today's uh, 
lot of modelers get away with uh, murder, but uh, the hydrologists don't like them because, uh, yeah, you predicted the storm great, and then you gave yourself a good score because you predicted 50 dBZ, but you put it in the wrong county, but uh, we vacated the wrong set of people. So location, location, location is as important and uh, depends on where the storm goes. And so how do we take all this? And then the track information is, are we gonna emphasize that? So these are all the, the inputs that get into decision-making that go into this. So advantage, um, I am actually starting to the process of putting it in real time, um, now casting using machine learning. I'm not sure if somebody else has done that, I mean, uh, but I mean, there's a lot of research and now casting with machine learning, but uh, let's go stick. So it's very fast to predict, but it's slow to train. And it's, um, you can adapt to different types of uh, seasons because Dallas-Fort Worth, in spite of it being Dallas-Fort Worth, it does occasionally snow there once a, once a year. And, uh, and it has the large amount of history to, uh, train and then these extreme events are the ones that catch newspaper attention and we need to so jennifer is showing up on the video which means time is up <laughs> yeah we're running okay out. i will i will end with this slide and uh, so but there are things that are yet to be generated on this that is there is no motion vector generation yet and it depends on limited uh, i'm going to skip this um, I am going to say there is a side-by-side -side comparison of a machine learning technique and uh, uh, the traditional darts. And right now, the machine learning has caught up with uh, the traditional things. And this is the summary. You can read for yourself, and I will respect other people's time and stop here. <laughs>